blessings. Today we're going to talk on the subject of submission. And this word, especially in the year we're in, 2014, this word definitely, 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 definitely is not being um, honored or being reverenced in the body of Christ. Because we have to understand, and that when I refer to, you may hear me refer to church or in, in, in my segment, and when I refer to church, I'm not talking about a building and I'm not talking about people that go to the building. I'm talking about the born again, uh, saved, sanctified women of God. That's what I'm talking about when I say the church, because just because a person goes to a building with a denominational to it and they name in a roll book, that does not make them of the church and that does not make them saved. And that does not make them a woman of God. Just because she preached, teaching, hollering, squalling, speaking tongues, that still doesn't make her a woman of God. We have to understand that the devil has transformed himself as an angel of light. And so many people are deceived. I'm getting off that topic right now because I'm not doing my segment on that. I'm doing it on submission. But anyway, submission. Submit means to give way, yield, give in or up. Submissive actually means to be obedient. And later on in the segment, I'm going to give my testimony of how um, the Holy Ghost began to deal with me and how I was uh, delivered from the Eve and Jezebel spirit. Because our flesh does not want to submit. Our flesh does not want, especially to a man, even if he is our husband. We don't want to submit. We want to go so far. But when it comes to no, you can't tell me where I can and can't go, what I can and can't do. That's just control. And I'm just not, nobody's going to tell me what to do. Hey, I know it because I said it. I said that before. Now I'm eating my very own words now that I said that before I got saved. And now that I am saved and sanctified, loving God, loving my husband, respecting him, I stay in order. And there are blessings in submitting yourself to proper authority, to my husband and to God first. I honor my husband and I honor God through honoring my husband. I submit myself to my husband and that's why I'm submitting myself unto the Lord. Because God didn't, he didn't just have them write these words. These words are not just mere letters on a page. Let me tell you something. If we're obedient to, to the spirit of God, to the word of God, and if we're obedient to our spouses, it is an awesome blessing. I'm a living witness. And I know I, I, throughout my segment, I'm going to get on the, well, if he ain't saved, I ain't got to submit to him. That ain't what the Bible said. Now, I understand if the man beating on you and this, that, and none, you better get your, use your common sense and get out of there. You better do what you got to do. Because if he kill you, it's nobody's fault but your own for staying. So I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about a lot of times we just try to justify our sins. We just try to justify why we don't do what we do. We don't want to submit to no man. We don't want him telling us what to do. We don't want to tell him where, telling us where we can and can't go. So therefore, that's the control to us. So therefore, I'm kicking against it. And I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna settle for that because no man is not gonna tell me that well that is not what the Bible says. And let me tell you, there is a blessing in being submissive. There is a blessing. I thank God. And you know, I look at 2014, the year we're in right now. You're not gonna get this kind of teaching. You're not gonna get this kind of teaching in what we call church because a lot of the times. People want to get up and give you feel good message. Do this, do that. God about to prosper. God about to bless you. This is your season. This is your destiny. I'm not telling you that. This said, yeah, this is your season. This is your destiny for you to get delivered, for you to get sanctified, for you to so for you to submit to the spirit of God and be obedient to the spirit of God. And if you are a woman of God, then submit to your husband. If you don't have a husband, submit to God. Submit to God obey that's what it means obey and it's so sad now I, I look back over my life as a child i didn't have i didn't grow up with a saved mother wish i had a thank it would have probably saved me from a lot of heartaches and a lot of things that i went through if i had her but it didn't go that way i i wasn't but i had an auntie who was saved, sanctified, and loved God. And I'm not just saying it just to say it. I thank God for blessing me. And I mean, just brings me to tears because she's not here any longer. The Lord, she's gone on to be with the Lord. Thank you. And I can truly say, I know she went on to be with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But 
She was a true woman of God. I remember growing up as a little girl and my auntie had a big family. She had a lot of children and I just so happened to be engrafted in as one of hers. I just claimed myself to be one of hers because I was always up there with the other children eating the food up and staying all night. So I was just like one of hers. And I thank God for her because I saw her throughout the years as my uncle wasn't saved. He wasn't a saved man, but she was a saved, praying, sanctified woman. And I, I would see her you know, um, stand up for him. You know, others tried to put him down and say he was this and he was that, but she would stand firm and say, you, that's my husband. You're not going to talk about him. She wouldn't allow her children to talk about him and nobody else. You're not going to put your mouth on my husband. That's my husband. And you're not going to talk about my husband. And she was praying for him and she was the submissive woman. He asked her to get him water. And she just did everything for him. She treated him like a king. And I would hear other family members down her and talk about her and call her crazy, call her stupid. That's why we, as if you're an adult, be careful what you say around children. They hear what you're saying. Watch your mouth because your words are very powerful. This was when I was a child and I grew up seeing her, seeing my aunt love the Lord, live the life God called her to live, praying, loving her husband, submissive to her husband. I even said one time, ain't no way, ain't no way I'd do that. He wouldn't be treating me like that. I'd be, you know, I'd be up out of here or it'd be on up in here. I remember saying that. But she always kept, was so quiet and she always prayed for him. She loved him. She took care of him. And, you know, I never understood how a woman could could do that. I just I was like, I just don't see it. You know, at home, you taking care of babies all day. You cooking, you cleaning. Uh uh. Ain't no way. That's that was my parameter at that age. I was like, ain't no way. I'm not taking care of no man. And, and he got two legs. God bless him. He get up and get his own water. He get up and fix his own plate. He do what he do for himself. I'm not finna do it. If I got to do it. He going to get up and do it too. That's the attitude I had. And because I was, you know, mistreated and downtrodden by men, you know, and um, that's one thing what really ruined a woman. When you have been out in the world fornicating, you have been shacked up, you have been um, uh, sexing with this man, that man, they treat you like a dog. And then when God see you come over here, you want to bring that over here in the body of Christ and say, well, um, ain't no man going to tell me what to do. Well, then that's not what the Bible says. See, before you came to Christ, praise God, you didn't care about what the word of God said. You didn't care about what God said. You did what you wanted to do, how you want to do it, when you want to do it. But let me tell you something. When you come over here, praise God. Um, to the hallelujah side, praise God. When you come over here, been born again, been filled with the Holy Ghost, praise God, been delivered, hallelujah. Then guess what? You know what the word of God tells you to do. He says submit. He didn't write in there and say, well, if he don't do this, then you don't got to do this. No, he said for you to submit. And like I said, if it's things that's, that's just, he's beating on you or it's, uh, it's just, terribly bad and more wrong and out of you know just out of sync with the word of god and the things of god then i understand no 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 but i'm gonna tell you like this i talk to many of women i see many of women and they don't went through two husbands three husbands so many husbands the husband's always the problem let them tell it but let me tell you something you need to stand up and take a responsibility for what you do. God not going to hold you accountable for what your husband does. He's going to hold you accountable for what you do. Okay? You're responsible for you. When you realize that women that wants to be bossy, women are bossy. I know. Been there. Women are bossy. Women want things they way when they want it, how they want it. Been there, been delivered from that. Been delivered from that. You got to understand something. When you come over here and get full of the Holy Ghost and get delivered, God has a word in this Bible. Study the word of God. He tells you exactly what a woman is supposed to do and what a man is supposed to do. But I hate to see women, and I, I was once in this category. I hate to see women 
always trying to tell their husband what they need to do and need not to do. Well, you need to go and need not. You don't need to do this or you don't. This the way this supposed to be done. And I don't think we should do this. And I don't think. Zip your lip. That lip has gotten me in a lot of trouble with God throughout the years. Me and my husband been married. Thank you, Jesus. 13 beautiful years. And when I say beautiful, I do. I know a lot of people may say, well, everybody have problems. Everybody do this. But let me tell you something. Far as major, no, we haven't. And I thank God for that. Why? Because I was really sincere with God. God blessed me with my husband. And guess what? It didn't take God but one time to get on to me about the, about my mouth and about me not submitting. And that's all it took. And when he got through rebuking me, I tell you one thing. These My husband would tell you, these 13 years have been beautiful. Why? Because I pray for the man of God, lift him up before the Lord. I do what the word of God tells me to do. I can't change my husband. I am not to change, try to change my husband. I'm responsible for changing and saving and saying, I'm responsible for me. And when I lift the man of God up before the Lord, it is God's responsibility. He's the only one that can save. He's the only one that can deliver. So we need to quit trying to play God, women. And we need to get delivered, sanctified. Get, get purged of this even Jezebel spirit, want to always be in control, want to always rule, and then try to justify why we do what we do. Ain't no justification for it. You're just wrong, you're just sinful, and you need to repent. And you need to sit down somewhere and zip your lip and submit. Submit to God and submit to your husband. And there's a blessing. Let me tell you from personal experience. There's a blessing in being submissive. A lot of people, like I said, going through two, three, four husbands. Oh, he did. So he went out and he did that. He Okay, he did what he did. What did you do? Well, I did. Well, I didn't do anything. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You probably ran your mouth off all the time, especially a woman who says she's a saved woman and the husband's not saved. The man going out smoking, he buying beer, he doing what he doing, and you sitting at home like praying and going, he won't go, go to services with you. He won't do anything pertaining to God with you. So what you do? Well, he bring beer in the house. You fuss at him. You go off on him. You pour his beer down the sink. Whoa, what did you do that for? Let me tell you something. You were wrong. And if woman, if you're doing that now, you're wrong. You're wrong. Well, God don't want him. No, God don't want you to try to change. You used to do some dirt. You used to do some stuff too. God's still dealing and working on you. You ain't the beer in the refrigerator, the whatever's in the refrigerator. You ain't drinking. That man done ran out there and worked a hard day's job. That man done went up and, and, and worked. Some of them working two or three jobs. That man come home, want to sit back in a, in a chair and drink a beer. We don't do that as saints of God. As If a man is doing that as a, as a man of God, you know, hey, let God deal with them. But for you to run up and tell him, well, you don't need, I don't want this in my house. First of all, it ain't just your house. It's his house, too. Majority of the times he's making most of the money paying all the bills. Anyway, the man can't get no peace at home because you run your mouth all the time. Guess what? He going down the road to Susie. Susie will fix that man dinner. Susie don't care. Drink all the beer you want. You can come in here. You can drink your beer. You can you can you can relax. Lay your feet back. What your wife won't do? I rub your feet, man. I rub your back. What your wife won't do? Well, her nig nagging running off at the mouth. What she won't do? I definitely will. But your wife can run down there to the building and run behind some other man who call himself a pastor. He asked her to jump how high. Asked her to jump. She said, hi, hi, pastor. She always talking about the pastor. It's the pastor that. Uh, excuse me. Who do you belong to? Are you married to the pastor? The pastor got a wife. That's her responsibility, not yours. You got a husband at home. You go home and tend to your own man. Because if you want some other woman, show sure enough will. All right, let's get on. James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. To God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist means to abstain from pleasure temptation i like that that definition because we so quick it said resist it but now we run to the temptation we run to the to the uh the the the, the um the wrong doing the pleasure if it feels good to my flesh i ain't gonna deny this flesh nothing 
You out there talking about you a woman of God. You praying to God send you a husband. But you keep on fornicating. You got a boo thing. You shacked up. You having sex with him and he's not your husband. You ain't waiting on God to send you no man. Did you just see what the word of God said? He said, resist the devil. You and then he also said even a little deeper, flee fornication, flee from it, run from it. You running right to it. It ain't no mistake. Tell me some, it's a mistake. We all make mistakes. No, this is not a mistake. You wanted the sex, you wanted the man, so you went and got him. Let's call it what it is. I don't play around with sin. I don't play around with it. I don't give you no pretty, pretty message talking about, well, we all make mistakes. No. No, we all make choices. You made the choice to go have this sex because you wanted it. You made the choice to go get this man because you wanted him. Now, you say you're a woman of God. No, you're not. A real woman of God will submit to God. Like the word said, obey. The word of God tells you to flee fornication. The word of God said resist the devil. You open the door up, woman. When you fornicate, fornicators have their part in a lake of fire. That's not me. That, I didn't write the Bible, but I will definitely preach it and teach it. I don't care who likes me and who don't. I'm not here to try to make nobody like me. See, messages like this, I can't stand. I won't be able to go up in these buildings and stand behind a pulpit and say this. You know why? Because no, no, no. You'll hurt the people's feelings. You'll run them away. Or you'll do this or you'll do that. I'll be like Jesus was, well, be thrown out of some synagogues, be like Paul. No, you got to get out of here with that. No, no, we can walk around here and look the part. We can be the wheat growing up with the tares. We can walk around here and look the part, talk the part. Blessed and highly favored of God. How you doing, girl? I'm blessed highly favored of God. Oh, but you got a boyfriend at home living with you. And he ain't going to marry you because he out there bragging to his friends about what all you give him and the sex you do. And, and he ain't stunt trying. He's not going to commit to you. Why would he? Why would he commit to you? If you're not going to respect yourself, and, 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 and why do you expect for him to respect you? And you know what I'm saying? I'm not telling you something that me myself haven't been through. I've been out there before I got saved. I've been out there before I got delivered. I've been out there a fornicator, giving your body away to some man that's not your husband. You, he has not made a commitment to you. And guess what? He ain't going to make no commitment to you. And then the thing about it is, why would you? You give that, you give him an ultimate. Well, I'm finna, I'm getting my life right to Lord, so you're gonna have to marry me. He didn't marry you because he loved you and wanted to. He married you because you give him an ultimatum. And, and nine times out of ten, a lot of them, they, they don't have a place to stay on their own. They don't have no no car. They don't have nothing, stability on their own. They want a track. They, they okay, she's stable. She got her own house. She got a bunch of children that ain't mine, but hey, I'll take her. She dish out the money. She do this and do that. He brag on you to his homeboys about how easy you are. You give him sex anytime you want to. You give him money anywhere. Hey, you a warm bed for me to sleep in? Hey, I ain't got to worry about you getting pregnant because you got a lot of children already and got your tubes tied. So I ain't got to worry about you. Hey, you just the type of woman I want. I can have, marry you and stay with you, have a warm place to sleep, have you take care of me, and I can be doing Susie and your best friend on the, down the street the same time with you. I'm just telling you like it is. This is how it is. This is the way it is. You don't have to. Well, I don't agree with you. I don't care if you don't agree with me. One thing people got to understand is I don't preach the word of God. I don't teach the word of God to be liked. I don't care if you don't agree with me. Long as I stick with the word of God, I'm not telling you my opinion. But long as I stick with the word of God, I could care less if you don't agree with me. And I'm sure a lot of women won't agree with me because a lot of these women are doing exactly what I'm saying on this video and they don't want to give it up. So they don't, they, they just keep on going on trying to justify their sins when there is no justification for it. A sin is a sin. You're a sinner and you need to get delivered. I don't care how much hallelujah, how much highly blessed and favored of God. No, you're truly blessed when you're saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. That's when you're truly blessed because you're under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you are obedient to the spirit and the word of God. You love him. If you love him, you'll keep my commandments. I'm to my keeping his word. You don't want to do anything. Yes, if you go out there the Bible even tells us you go out there as a believer, as a saint of God, a woman of God, and you sin. The Bible says you have an advocate with the Father. Okay, you can repent and you can move on. But a, a sinner goes out and has no regard for God's word. I'm going to do what I, whatever I want to do. I'm going to sleep with who I want to sleep with. I'm going to go where I want to go. I don't care. Yeah, I know it's wrong, but I'm still okay. But a saint of God, a woman of God say, you know what? 
the word of God says thus and so, I need to fall out on the altar. I need to pray. I need to fast. I need to seek God. Lord, take everything unlike you out of me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want to please you, Father. I don't want to displease you. I don't want to hurt you, Father, with me sinning and going around here saying I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to be a representative of you, Christ. I'm not a representative of you if I'm disobedient to your word. If I look nothing like you, praise God. If I sound nothing like you, praise God. If I don't live a holy and sanctified, separated life from the world, from the world like you told me, God, then guess what? I'm not a representative of Christ. I'm just a woman who run my mouth, who quote scriptures, who speak in tongues, and I'm a, I am sound like a tingling of sounding brass because there's nothing godly, nothing Christian in me, around me, about me. Just a bunch of talk and no action. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5 and 24 says, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything. He didn't say some things. He said everything. He didn't say you can pick and choose well since he ain't saved. But see, that's where it goes back. If you were saved first, you had no business marrying an unbeliever. The Bible says for an unbeliever not to be unequally yoked. I don't care if you was shacking with him. You were shacking with him. You got saved. Guess what? I got to go. Because guess what? You choose to marry them, you already disobey God because you're, now you're unequally yoked. Now you are unequally yoked and the devil's going to definitely use that unbeliever against you because that devil don't want nothing to do with your so-called God. I don't like Jesus Christ, not the real Jesus. Now the Bible speaks about Another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. That's what we're seeing right now presented. The God loves you and this, that, and the other. And anybody who preaches against that, anybody who stands for truth. See, the real church is being persecuted by the religious bunch, not by the world. The world are going to do what they do. They could care less. But the real church is being persecuted by the religious bunch because the religious bunches are the ones who persecuted Jesus. They're the ones who quote the scriptures, wrote the scriptures on, the, on their sleeves, wore the long robes and the little whatever they did and went to the synagogue and did long prayers and all of this. But when the real thing, hallelujah, showed up in the temple, showed up in their synagogue, praise God, what did they do to them? They threw him out. Everything Jesus did, the Pharisees and scribes, what did they do? They questioned him. They tried to find something wrong. They tried to say, well, this man's... And then if you even read John 6, 66, you'll see how they said, uh, Jesus, these teachings are how I say his disciples left him and followed him no more because your words are just too hard for us. Who can do this? Hallelujah. No, you can do it through Christ. You don't want to do it. You don't want to submit to Christ. You don't want to do what, what he wants you to do. You want to do what you want to do, but you still want to pull him and stamp his approval on it ain't gonna work ain't going to work hallelujah glory to god i tell you one thing you making fool people for a while with your quoting scripture shouting in the building saying you're a christian and that's only gonna last for a while because let me tell you some people know when you're real and when you ain't and let me tell you one person who definitely knows where i take that back actually three First is God. He know your heart and he know ain't nothing to you. Second is the devil. He know ain't nothing to you. He know you ain't got no power. He know you just speaking in all them tongues, rolling on the floor, doing whatever. But he know ain't you ain't got no power over him. He know you ain't got nothing against him. You are no threat to him. So he don't bother you. Then you got the third person, yourself. Yourself. Because you no, you ain't fooling yourself. You know you don't. You know you want to try to read the book of Psalms and stay in that book. Read about, okay, God going to give me this. God going to give me that. Turn on back some more pages. Seek the Holy Ghost and ask him what it is he have you to know. See, won't this word cut everything unlike God out of you? You be trying to say, no, nah, this for so No, nah, that's for you. That's for you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We won't go sit under the real teaching of Christ. We'll go to the another Jesus, another spirit. Because see, the real Jesus of Christ have not, the real Jesus has is, is coming forth being preached. We're told you're too harsh. You're too mean. You're this, you're that. You know why? Because you're not used to Jesus. Jesus is not some little, like they paint him on a picture, some little blue-eyed man with long blonde hair. Uh-uh. 
We talking about the same Jesus, the same God that will kill, that killed people. The same Jesus that said, if you make your bed in hell, I'm with you. You the same, the same Jesus that said that you should fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. God is love. Love is truth. The Bible says you can't even be saved except you have the love for the truth. But people are going to do like the word of God says in the last days. They're going to flock. He teaches upon themselves having what? Itching ears. Tell me what I want to hear. Make me feel good. Don't hurt my feelings. Just tell me I'm going to be blessed. Just tell me if I give this amount of money of seed, then I'm going to be blessed. Don't say nothing about me fornicating. Don't say nothing about me shacking. Don't say nothing about me lying. Don't say nothing about me clubbing. Don't say nothing about none of that because, because see, God loves me. Because, see, I, I, I don't want to hear that. Anybody that says that, I'm not going to sit under them. They're harsh to me. They, I don't, I don't want to hear that. That, that's just too harsh. Oh, thank you, Lord. So many people are gonna be deceived when they stand before the Lord and think, and think that they're going to heaven, and think that they're going to heaven. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I do a self-examination of Shonda every day, all the time. Lord, created me a clean heart, renew within me a right spirit not no spirit of the devil going around here calling it the holy spirit it ain't it's a lot of spirits out here and they ain't holy or there's only one holy spirit but there are a lot of other spirits out here and they are not of god they are not of the almighty god people think when you mention jesus or god or this you're talking about the jesus of the bible when when you need to read your word and understand that there is another jesus being preached there is another gospel being preached there is another spirit that you can receive and you think you're serving the almighty god you think you're serving jesus christ of nazareth the jesus christ the anointed one oh no you've been deceived sister You've been deceived because this Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this Jesus Christ anointed one calls for you to give up everything. He calls for you to give up your will for his praise God. He calls you to give up everything and surrender everything, your will for his. But he already know many not going to do it. That's why the Bible says that many won't be, that, the, that many won't even be saved. Why? Because they're not going to give up their will and what they want to do. They want the religious they want to look this part. They want to sound this part. But when it comes to actually living it and giving up my will for yours, uh-uh. Mm -mm. No way. And you're not going to be saved either. Ephesians 5 and 24 says what? Now as the church submits to Christ, as the church submits, obey, submit, obey, Christ, hallelujah, obey, Christ so also wives should submit obey submit obey get that in your head get your concordance look up the word submit look up the word submissive and you will see I'm coming straight from the word of God go along with me as I read these scriptures get your Bible don't just take what I'm telling you never do that that's how so many people are deceived you never study the word of God for yourself. You just take whatever somebody behind a pulpit tell you and you run with it. Well, pastor say, pastor, I don't care. What does God say? What is the word? Do you know the Lord for yourself? Hallelujah. Do you have a personal relationship with the Lord for yourself? That's another thing that just burns me up. A woman starts saying that I'm walking off. You will be standing there looking like a fool talking by yourself because I'm not listening to it. You come up to me and you talking about what well, pastor this and pastor, I can tell right then you don't have a relationship with the Lord. And that pastor done put that witchcraft control spirit in you and you would do whatever this man say. This man got a wife. A lot of pastors don't and some do. Got a wife. The wife, that's the wife job. Let her talk about her man. Let her put uh, lift up her man. You got a husband at home. You don't talk about him like you do the pastor. Something wrong with that. I don't care if the man ain't saved. Speak those things that be not as though they were. That is your husband. You the one said I do to him. And you are supposed to submit to him. And then you call yourself. The Bible also says that the husband is sanctified by the wife. The wife sanctified by the husband. But yet and still who's to say who can who, who would say who? You can't say that they'll get saved. But you can pray for them. You can believe. But let me tell you something. I understand this much too. If somebody don't want you, they just don't want you. Can't make nobody want you. That's just, I understand that too. But I want you to hear. 
where I'm coming from, the word of God don't change for you. It don't change for me. We can't go off of how I feel, what I feel like submitting to him today. I feel like doing what he didn't do what I asked him to do, so I ain't going to do what he asked him to do. He responsible for God for what he do. You're responsible for God for what you do. Well, oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And maybe a lot of these women married to unsaved men. You around here running after the pastor, running to the building all the time, running, doing this program, that program. You never see you with your husband. You're never at home. That's a that's that's not being obedient to the word of God. We're gonna go on and read the word of God and see what he says in um to 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 us women that so I know every woman don't preach the gospel and teach the gospel, but there are some that God have chosen to. But let me tell you, women, your home is your first priority. Your husband is your first priority. I can't preach, teach to no other woman if I'm not taking care of my home first. If my home is out of order, if my man is not being taken care of the man of God that God has blessed me with. If it's, if he's not being taken care of and then my child and my home, guess what? I'm out here trying to preach to other women. I need to sit myself down somewhere, zip my big mouth, close up that Bible, trying to preach it to some other woman. And I need to go back and repent. And then I need to go back and take care of my home. I de definitely needs to do that. I definitely need to do that. I see so many women now and they just don't even realize the damage. Every time you look around, they oh, they dressed up going to a building, going to preach here, going to preach there. Where your husband at? He at home. You got some other men with you. Your husband sitting at home watching TV. Oh God, that is that that that's very terrible. That's really perverted. It's really, to me, about to make me puke. It's, it's really, once you really, God, really begin to open up your eyes to the word of God and, to your, and, and open up your understanding, it's like you just be enlightened. You see things spiritually, see in the spirit realm. See, we are to walk in the spirit. We don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. A woman of God walks in the spirit that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I don't care how my flesh feel. I don't care what I think. I don't care what I feel. I don't care if I want to do it if I don't. That doesn't matter. When I got baptized, went down in the name of Jesus Christ, when I come up, that old Shonda died. You better stay down there every time I feel her trying to come back up. I kick her back down. Glory, I kick her back down because you don't rule nothing here, praise God. Living in that old Shonda was taking me straight to hell. This new, regenerated, revived, born again, saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled woman. I will please my God. I will submit to my God. I will submit to my husband. I will do what the word of God tells me to do. I will stay in proper order, praise God, that God can bless me. It ain't about being blessed because you can go buy some purses and some shoes and some clothes and dress like this and dress like that. That ain't about being blessed. It's blessed when you're saved, praise God. It's blessed when you're anointed by God, hallelujah. If you are blessed, praise God, when you you can get up out of the bed and clean your own house, praise God, and ain't got to have some other woman come in. That burns me up, a woman coming in. You got a nanny hire to clean, take care of your children. You got a, 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 a housekeeper to come home and clean your house up because you got the money to pay her when God done blessed you with two good hands. Praise God. Thank you for my hands, Jesus. He done blessed you with two legs that can get up and walk. Praise God. And you going to go hire and pay some other woman to come in your house and cook for your family, clean for your family, take care of your husband. Oh, no, the nanny doing more than just washing your clothes. If you turn your head and you ain't got no say, sanctify, Holy Ghost, feel the man. Oh, God, let me tell you something. She'll take care of that man, too. His every need. Well, thank you. Why you out somewhere trying to chase down the money? Why you trying to chase down worldly and materialistic things and your home is neglected? Your man is neglected, praise God. That's when you're blessed, when you can be a woman of God to stand up. And say, look, I'm taking care of my home. I'm being obedient to the word of God. I've had a lot of people come and tell me, you're young. You're a young woman. You can go back to school. I had a dream of, I love working with children. I love it. And this is my personal testimony. I had, it was my dream. And it was my desire to own my own daycare. Well. 
once I got saved and I got married, then I, the Lord allowed me to work with children at daycares and everything. Then I got pregnant. I had my own child. Okay. The Lord began to deal with me. I was working a full-time job. My husband working a full-time job. I would go to, to the daycare to work and I would take my baby with me. She'd be in another room. It was like someone was on the inside of me. It's like, I can't do this. I, I'm missing my baby. I'm missing growing. I'm missing her growing up. I'm, I'm walking to the other rooms trying to look in at her, see what she's doing. So I'm like, I can't do this. And and my husband, God began to deal with me. And my husband told me, he said, you know what? Uh, well, my mom got sick with cancer and I brought her home and took care of her. But my husband was like, you know what? You're going to um have to um, come home. Now, he allowed me to go back once my daughter done. Now she's in school and, and, and eight years old in the second grade. Thank you, Jesus. And she's going to school. And um, so my husband allowed, well, you can go and you can sub at a daycare. I love working with them babies. Like, I just can't stay away from them babies. I love them babies. And the Lord began to deal with me even with that. He was, he was leading me to start a women's ministry. During the daytime, during the morning time, while my child is at school and while my husband's at work. And the 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 just the desire to even work, period, even subbing when they call me in. I just couldn't do it anymore. My heart, my heart, praise God, was here. I was able to pray. My husband said, You gotta come off. You gotta come off. You just can't work no more. You work at home. I was able to pick my baby up from school, drop her off, pick her up. Do my house chores, listen to my word, read my word, pray, lay out before God. And when I tell you, I wouldn't rather have it no other way. I wouldn't rather have it no other way. No other way. And God began to bless me spiritually, praise God. I began to grow in the spirit. I began to grow in things of God. He began to open up my eyes to so much of the word of God. He began to just give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and revelation of the word of God. And I began, to, and it became a joy. For me to stay at home and wash clothes. It became a joy for me to stay at home and cook a meal every day for my family. Not being tired. Even when I was working, my husband was, if he was here, he could have tested this. Even when I was working a full-time job, taking care of my mom. Um, and then I came home and took care of my mom. And I was wore out. And my baby was born and she was a newborn. I was wore out. But when I tell you my house was clean. My husband had a home cooked meal every day of the week. Every day. Laundry got done. He never had to ask me to wash his work clothes. He never had to ask me for nothing. Because when he get home from work, no matter how tired I was, all he had to do was take his bath. That's all he had to do. And if he wanted me to run your bath water, I'll get up and do that. And that's the way I began to learn. And I began to not just do this because... I'm supposed to do this. I began to do this and I began to enjoy doing this. I began to have a love for taking care of my home. I began to have a love for preparing menus for my family, healthy menus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I began to just be just love being a chase keeper at home like the word told me. Hallelujah. I didn't care. I didn't care about the, the 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 going out shopping and all of that. I have my days where we 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 have family day on Saturdays. When my husband don't have to work. If we don't do anything but go on a picnic. We're away from the computer. We're away from everything. And we're just together. If it's nowhere but at the park. If it's nowhere but just at a restaurant. Sitting down eating lunch. We're together in that period of time. Every Saturday try to be. That's our family time. No talking on the cell phones. No computer. No internet. No nothing. That's our family time. And. I began to enjoy this. And I'm telling you, I'm even now, I'm just overwhelmed that I love this. I love this. I love being the chase keeper at home. I love being at home and doing what I do. Wouldn't rather be anywhere else. Wouldn't rather be anywhere else. I wouldn't. This is what's important to me. And so we got blessings all mixed up. You're a blessed woman of God when you're saved. You're a blessed woman of God when you're obedient to the word of God. And he began to open up doors for you. Hallelujah. In the spirit realm. He began to anoint you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. The Bible talks about the man, the husband being able to praise his wife. It's a blessing to have a husband that praises his wife. But if a husband got a wife that nag, 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 nag. 
Ain't nothing he do or say ever right. She's always finding the wrong, but never finding nothing right. She's she's always this, that, and the other. That silly woman. Nag, nag, nag. What kind of man would want to come home to that? What kind of man would want that? What kind of man would want a woman that chase after another man? The pastor can ask her to do something. She run into him. She running and, and don't question if she doing what she doing because he done told her that that's the way you get God bless you. Now we God bless you by being obedient to your own husband. That's what the word said. That's what the word said. The Bible does say that you are to submit yourself to those who have the rule over you. So if you're sitting on, and a lot of people that's got the rule over you, God didn't send you there. You chose to be there. And so whatever, whatever leadership they are of, of the devil or whoever, they control you, your every move, your action to tell you how to dress, what to wear, this, that, and the other, and witchcraft control. And you sit there. Now, God didn't send you there. That's just your choice. You choose to sit there. So guess what? Yep, you got to submit to it because you choose to sit there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So yes, you are to submit to authority. You have to submit to authority in the natural, in the world. You can't go down the road speeding and don't think you're going to get no ticket because you're going to get a ticket. So if you see a st if you see a sign up there, and there's something I'm dealing with, ladies. <laughs> Got a heavy foot, as you call it, because sometimes I have to check myself. My husband gets on to me. Sometimes I really hate driving when he in the car with me. That's why I have him driving all the time when we ride. I hate to drive, period. And I have to drive my daughter to school every day and pick her up and run errands. So when I get a day off not to drive, I take it. I don't drive. So most of the time on weekends when we go out, my husband's going to do the driving. I'm going to do the ride. But I get behind that wheel and I just get the talking. I'm a woman that can't talk. Don't talk to me while I'm driving because I'm going to pay attention to you and won't pay attention to the world. So I'm a woman. I be just rolling. I be rolling. And my husband... Baby, the speed sign said 55, you're going 65, you're going 70, and I have to, I'm sorry. First thing a woman want to do, I'm driving. I know how to drive, this, that, and other. Nope. You know what my response is? Thanks, baby. You right. And what I do, slow it down. I thank God for him. I thank God for him telling me that. Because you know what? If I want to be such a smarty pants, if I want to be so... Thinking I know everything and, and you don't have to tell me how to how fast to go. I know how fast I'm going. I know what the signs say. Then next thing you know, rear, 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 that's what you get. That's what you get. So for not submitting to your spouse and not submitting to God, the consequences you have to suffer, don't say it's the devil. It's not the devil. Now, he does his dirt and he does a lot of things. But a lot of stuff that we go through, women, a lot of stuff we suffer is because of our mouth, our little tongue, keep wagging. We won't submit to, the, to God or to our spouses. And that's why you're in the shape you're in right now. That's exactly why. It ain't the devil. You. It's you. It's you. I thank God for this word. This word has cut me up and Lord cut everything unlike you out of me. I give you total permission. I surrender to you. Cut it out. Cut the little snobbish attitude, the little, the little um, smart remarks, the little wagging tongue. Don't know when to shut up. Lord, brighter this tongue, Jesus. I give you total permission. Help me, Jesus. You got to want the help. You got to want to be delivered. I wanted to be delivered. I'm still wanting to be delivered from some things. As long as I'm on this earth, I'm going to need some deliverance from something. I'm going to need the Lord to deliver. I'm going to need the Lord to help me. As long as I'm on this earth in this stinking flesh that don't want to do nothing, God tell it to do. But the Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But we have to bring, like Paul say, we have to bring our own body under subjection to the word of God. As Paul said, as I preach to others and then I myself be a castaway. What was Paul saying? After I preach all this good word and truth to you, I'm still human, I'm still flesh. If I don't obey the word of God and the will of God, I can still die and go to hell and some of y'all can receive it and be saved. That's what Paul was saying. I'm not going to hell for Shonda and for nobody else. I'm going to be with the Lord. Not because of what somebody get behind a box and say over a casket. Hallelujah. Glory. Because that doesn't mean a hill of beans. Well, oh, thank you. But once this spirit leave this body. Well, oh, thank you. Once it leave this body. The Bible says. 
than the judgment. So you will be judged. We will be every last one of us for the, according to the deeds done in this body. Well, thank you. Thank you for chance after chance, God. Thank you for repentance. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for repentance. All right. We're going to go to second. We're going to go to Titus chapter two. Titus chapter two. And we're going to start at verse three. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. I always often tell people holiness is not a dress code holiness is a lifestyle for without god without being holy no man can see god oh thank you he's an holy god righteous god hallelujah that they be in behavior as becometh holiness not false accusers not giving too much wine and i often say that too People say all, all the time, ask me, is it a sin to drink wine? Get in the word of God. Jesus drunk wine. Okay. He drunk wine. So how, I, how would I know? How would I be able to tell you it's a sin to drink wine when Jesus drunk it? <laughs> and when we have the last supper, we're going to break bread and drink wine. It ain't going to be no grape juice. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing, um, substitutial for the blood of Jesus. Ain't nothing. You may drink a little grape juice and say, okay, this is a, because I'm going to tell you about me. Now, see, I don't drink wine. And the reason being, because, see, I take sacrament. Me and my husband take sacrament every morning or every other morning. And um, we drink grape juice instead of grape wine. And the reason being is not because it's a sin to drink wine. I drink don't drink wine because before I got saved, I used to drink grape wine. That TJ Swan, I think that was the name of it. I used to drink that all the time and them wine coolers. And I'm very low tolerant of alcohol. I just can't handle alcohol well. And I would drink, I would, I would drink that grape wine, and it seemed like I got to where I had to have that grape wine every day. Thank God I wasn't an alcoholic, but it's just like I had to have it. Which I guess you would say an alcoholic, but when I quit, I quit. So but now that I'm saved, why would I want to go and get a bottle of grape wine and put it in my in my refrigerator and tempt myself? Okay, why? I know it's self-control. I know I can control myself. But why would I even go and buy? It's like a crackhead. Why would a crackhead go out there and just say they deliver from crack and then go sit around a bunch of other crackheads doing smoking crack? That's crazy. But let me just tell you like this. I believe I could drink wine. I believe I could, could get me a glass of wine and drink it and not have a problem. That's because I have faith to believe that that old Shonda has died and this new Shonda has, erect, has resurrected. True enough. But I choose not to even touch the wine. I don't want it. Like I said, I was not an alcoholic. But hey, I liked it, that wine. And we both, we all know wine has alcohol in it. And if you drink too much of it, your head go to spinning, you get a little tipsy, okay? You can get a little drunk. We all know that. So I just choose, don't even drink a sip of it. Just leave it alone. Leave where it's at. Leave where it's at. And I just drink the grape juice. So I drink grape juice and the crackers to represent the sacrament. But I'm not telling the next woman, don't get you no wine. If you want wine, if you want wine with uh, along with... You know, with your family, or if you go out to a restaurant and get a glass of white wine, or that's you. There's nothing. There's not a sin in that. I know people preach that well, it is. Now, yeah, no, it's not. Jesus drunk wine. Jesus drunk wine, and he was he was God. He was holier than he was the holiest holy. So drinking wine is not a sin. It's when you drink too much and get drunk. That's when you done cross the line and you done sin. Cause now you're drunk. You're out of your mind. You're not sober. And you are, you've become drunk. So, drinking a glass of wine is not a sin. All right, we got that clear right now. That's not my opinion. It's in the word. If Jesus didn't want, if it was a sin to drink wine, then Jesus shouldn't have done it. And I know people say, well, it was grape juice back then because they went, no, it couldn't have been because Noah got so toe up, he was drunk. Then we read on in the Bible where the man that got so drunk and then had, uh, his daughters was coming in, seeing them naked. So, you know, there, there's... That, that's that's correct. Read the word of God. Get get wisdom, not to understand it for yourself. The Holy Ghost shall lead you and guide you into all truths. So don't ask me. Ask, seek God and ask him. He, he won't lead you wrong. 
Holy Ghost won't lead you wrong. I just believe in going by what the words say. Words say Jesus drunk it. We're going to drink it at the last supper when we sit around the table at the, at, at, at the with the Lamb of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We ain't drinking no substitute grape juice. We ain't drinking no, we drinking the real thing. Hallelujah. It ain't going to, it's going to be pure. 100 percent pure hallelujah glory to god thank you all right let's go on it just said women that you should not be not giving too much that's where you'll get drunk get out your mind you don't control yourself okay that they may teach the young women to be sober to love their husbands to love their children i wonder why did the word say that teach the young women to love their husbands you know i look at the year we in now 2014 you ain't gonna find no older women teaching no younger women because these older women are just as bad as the younger ones the older women still trying to party and fornicate and everything else get the groove on they ain't stunned trying to tell no younger women they sitting up on the mother's board yeah their mother all right they sitting up on the mother's board gossiping lying keeping up all kinds of mess got boyfriends shacking I can't get married, girl. Mm -mm. They'll cut off my disability and social security check. I can't get married. Well, you better close your legs, Grandma. You better close your legs. And you willing to go to hell over some four or six hundred or however much you get a month because you won't because you won't, don't want your disability and your we know where your faith is, but you sit up on the mother's board calling yourself a mother of the church. Mother can't lay hands on and pray for me. Mother can't tell me nothing or teach me nothing. Well, thank you, Jesus. Hey, let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it real. It said to love their husbands. This needs to be taught. You love your husband. I don't care what he's doing and ain't doing. You're not responsible for him. You're responsible for you. You pray for him. You pray for him. And you love him. And you treat him good. A woman of God is loving. She's kind and she loves that man of God. She does what I think back like I said earlier in this segment of my auntie. Loving her husband and don't let nobody talk about him or put him down. This is my husband. And I thank God. I, I love to hear her say that. Hallelujah. And, and women called her crazy. Women called her so stupid i wouldn't let no man i was even one that said i wouldn't let no man and now i look at me now and i really miss my auntie and i wish she was here right to this day i could just go and hug her give her a kiss and tell her thank you for planting that seed in me thank you glory to all those shot thank you for planting that seed in me hallelujah because god knew Thank you, Lord, for loving me enough to put her in my life, praise God. But God knew, God knew that I needed to see a godly, sanctified woman do this because one day I'm going to get married. And I'm going to eat those very words that I said up because I'm eating them up right now because I'm submissive to my husband. I love my husband. My husband is my king. My husband is my all in all. He's he my husband is my spiritual covering, praise God. Oh, thank you. I don't question what my husband say. If he say it, I just say yes, yes baby, and I do it. Yes, we sit down, we have discussions and we talk, but when it overall comes, He's the one that makes the decision, not me. And a lot of times I'm like, baby, whatever you say, that's what I'll do. What do you want me to do? I asked my husband before he go to work in the morning time, do you need me to do anything for you today? Do you need me to go anywhere and get you anything today? Well, thank you. Well, he don't, my husband don't ask me that. He don't treat me like that. He don't do me like that. I didn't ask you. The Bible didn't say if he do that thus and so for you. He told the man what he's supposed to do. He going to judge him by what him not doing. He told you what you're supposed to do. He going to judge you by what you are not doing. But let me tell you something. When God, when I began to submit to my husband, when I began to be a chase keeper at home, let's read on down. It says here in verse seven, verse eight. Oh, verse 5. I'm sorry. We're going to go back to uh, verse 5. To be discreet. Chase keepers at home. Chaste. Pure. Holy. Keepers at home. 
I hate to go in a grocery store and I hear a big mouth woman, but y'all understand a woman that ain't of God. She talks like that. But a woman that say she is a Christian woman, say she's a woman of God in the grocery store with a big mouth, cussing the children out, bring your butt here, blah, 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 your m and f this, you this, that, and the other, and, and, and I'm sick of this and this, that. I'm looking around like, okay, I expect that from a woman in the world. But from you who say you're a woman of God, if you don't be crying and close your mouth and lay yourself out on the altar, get purged and deliver. If you don't, praise God. Well, thank you. You don't represent my God. Not in no shape, form, or fashion. Chase, keepers at home. Good. Obedient. It put the word obedient in there this time. It didn't put the word submit because they mean the same thing. Obedient to their own. He didn't say to no other man. He didn't say to no other man. He said to their own husbands that the word of God be not blasphemed. Don't be evil spoken of because you call yourself a woman of God and you know what the word of God says, how you're supposed to conduct yourself as a woman of God. Well, thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you. So I pray. That's something I said today. I pray that you would receive it. I pray that if you are a woman of God, that you would repent. You would lay out on the altar and get purged and delivered. Ask God to brighter that tongue. Ask God to deliver you, to set you free, make you free, make you all over. Take out that Eve and that Jezebelic spirit that wants to, wants to control, wants to be bossy like women are. Always running off at the mouth and ain't saying nothing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. I thank God for making me today that woman, submissive woman of God. It is a blessing. When I tell you God has tremendously blessed me, he's tremendously blessed me. And I'm not just talking about materialistic things because I don't care. To be honest with you, I don't care about materialistic things. I remember when I was out in the world before I got married. That's all I used to do. I worked. I had my own job. Lived at home with my mama so I could buy anything I want when I want it. Get my nails done every week. Get my hair fixed. Buy, do my wigs up. Do whatever I wanted to do because I had my own money. I go where I want to go. Do what I want to do. Praise God. That's how I was when I was out there in the world, when I was a sinner. But once I became saved and sanctified in Holy Ghost field, once I became a woman of God and not a woman of the world, Hallelujah. God began to transform my mind, soul, body, and spirit. Well, thank you. It is through the word of God. He said, the word of God said we are sanctified through the word. Sanctified mean clean. He began to, I began to study that word. I don't just be reading it. I began to study, study to show yourself approved. I began to study. I got me a Bible concordance, Greek, Hebrew. I began to study. And I'm still studying to this day. I'm still laying out in the morning time. Hallelujah. Can't wait to get through cleaning up. Get the clothes in the washing machine so I can wrap up in my blanket and get on that flow and lay out prostate before the Lord. Purge me, Jesus. Cleanse me, Lord. Create me a clean heart, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Bright on my tongue, Lord. Bless me to be the woman of God you call me to be. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless me be the wife that you call me to be, Lord God. Bless me to be the mother you call me to be, Lord God. Thank you. I don't want no nanny. And I don't want no, no daycare and nobody else raising my children. That is my responsibility. And I thank God that I am a blessed. I'm blessed to be able to stay at home and take care of my child. Do you women not know that that's a blessing? I don't care about trying to go out and make money. Well, you know, it's okay to make a little money. No, I don't care about that. I care about doing what the words say, being a chase keeper at home. Forget some nails done and a hair done every now and then. I'm able to do that. But if I don't get it done, so what? So what? Buy some dollar nail polish and polish your own nails. Buy your wig so you don't have to keep going and getting your hair fixed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I remember when I prayed, when me and my husband were going through financial difficulties as we were going through different things and, and our finances was a hot mess. But I tr we trusted God. And I told him, look, baby, I ain't going to no beautician $50 and $60 a week. Forget that. I prayed. And I thank God he's blessed my husband to be able to cut hair. 
My husband cuts his own hair. Don't have to go to a barber. That's a blessing. Don't have to pay somebody else to do that. So I began to pray and I said, Lord, anoint my hands. I don't have the money to go to a beautician, God. But I like my hair being fixed. I like looking nice. I like looking nice for my husband. So you know God bless my hands and I could go buy a perm. Do you hear what I said? I can buy a little perm. I could do my own hair. My husband keep my ends trimmed, look, keep them looking neat. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Six dollar perm. Thank you for the six dollar perm. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Jesus. So I don't care about that. And I said, baby, don't worry about it when it's when it's when I'm able to go to a beautician. God will bless me with the right beautician because I don't just let anybody get in my hair. But I said, God will bless me with the right beautician. But until then, until our finances are stable, I dare not take the money that you work hard for and earn. I dare not take that money and go spend it like that. I'm putting that money back. I'm putting that money back. That money is going to go toward house supplies. That money is going to go toward some bills. That money is going to go toward buying groceries. And I sit down and I budget a grocery bill out. I said, I'm not going to take my husband's hard-earned money and go out here and just blow it. I see women now, they, these women and these young girls, they don't know nothing about the first about being a husband. I mean, about being a wife to a husband. They think it's all about you getting married and it's sex, sex, sex. Oh, okay, I'm not fornicating no more, so what? No, it's more to marriage than that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And marriage is, are you ready to give up yourself? That's what I like to tell a lot of women because that's exactly what you're going to be doing. And we don't realize it, but when you have a child, that's what you do. It ain't no longer about where you're going to go, what you can do. Now that child comes before you. But a lot of parents neglect the children, just put themselves up. You go play the video game, you go watch TV, you go do whatever you want to do. Just get out, get away from me. I'm tired. I don't feel like being bothered with you. And that's just, that's not being a parent. That's not being a parent at all. Me and my daughter have what we call Mother Daughter Day. And I thank God for when she's out of school, on spring break, summer break, whatever, We'll get up and go, if it's nowhere but to McDonald's, we sit down and eat a 99 cent burger and fries and drink, and we talk up together, and we just laugh together. We'll go over to the park and just, if we have to take a picnic, we'll go take a picnic and just eat sandwiches that I made at home for free, and just sit down and laugh and talk over a sandwich and chips, and then go and get on a swing and push her and watch her play on the monkey bars. And I'm just, she enjoys that. Why? Because that's mama and daughter time. I don't just push her away and say, you gone. Go away from me. Watch TV. Half the stuff they watching on TV, they don't need to be watching anyway. My daughter can't watch TV during the week. She only can watch it on weekends. We don't have cable, so I ain't got to worry about what she watching. I monitor her TV shows. I monitor what she watches on her computer. I monitors it. I don't care what nobody else, how you raise your child, that's you and you. But I tell you like this, the Bible says you train up in the child that which, in the way they should go. Then when they're old, oh, they're not, they will not depart from it. God holds us accountable, women. He holds us accountable. You should be your daughter's best and first teacher. I tell my daughter all the time, yes, watch mama. Because one day, if the Lord's willing, if we're still here, you're going to grow up and you're going to get married one day. You're going to have children. You need to know how to be a wife and you need to know how to raise your children in the fear of the Lord. You watch mama. You don't watch. You see mama. And I know a lot of parents, but don't watch me. You do as I tell you. Do no, I tell my daughter, you know, you watch me. You don't see mama cussing daddy out and fussing and raising her voice and going off on daddy. You don't see mama doing that. That's not the way of God. I teach my daughter the word of God. This is not mama's opinion. This is the word of God. If you want to please God, this is what he tell you to do. You disobey the word of God, there are consequences for you to pay. That is, it is what it is. That's what God is holding us accountable to. Submission is a blessing. God has really tremendously blessed me spiritually. I wouldn't rather be nowhere else doing nothing else. I wouldn't rather be nowhere else. Forget some money, forget whatever. I thank God for the blessings, which is my child, my husband, and I may not have a big old fancy beautiful home, but you know what? That's okay. That's all right. It's a roof over my head and I'm content. And when God see fit to bless me with something bigger and better, so be it he will. But until he do, I'm going to make sure I do seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I want to be righteous before God. I want to be the righteous woman of God he called me to be. 
or thank you. What need is it for me to have all this materialistic stuff and my home is out of order? My husband can't stand me and he'd rather go be with the woman down the street than come home to me. What good is having materialistic stuff going to do? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you. Now, I'd much rather just have my man of God coming home, loving the rush to come home to me putting his arms around me, kissing and hugging on me, telling me how much he loved me, telling me how much he appreciate what I do for him. I, that is a bless, that's a blessing. That's some money came by, praise God. So I pray something I said today bless you. I pray that if you are a woman of God, and you have not been walking obedient to the spirit of God and to the word of God and submissive to your husband, and then especially women who preach, especially women who get up and say they're an evangelist and speaking in tongues and preaching to other folk. And you can't even, yo, you won't even submit to your own husband. Your husband much rather go be with Sally Sue than be with you. You always running here and there with other men and your husband sitting at home. That's out of order, woman. That's out of order. And I'm here just to tell you it's out of order. I don't care how much people, well, people love me. They this no, people don't love you. That's the track of the devil. That is a trick of the devil. Because you are out the will of God. Well, God is calling me to preach here and preach. No, he ain't God is calling you to obey his word. And his word said, go home. His word said, obey your own husband. That's what God calling you to do. See, I can tell you when a woman is lying. Well, the Lord told me to do this and that. What you doing for your husband? Why is your home out of order? Why you ain't never with your man? Why your man always down, down there talking about how you run your mouth and how you running behind the pastor and he can't ask you to give him a drink of water without you fussing and cussing him out? Now you out of order, woman. Take your behind home, repent, lay out on all to get delivered. Get submissive to the spirit of God and to the word of God. I love you all in the Lord. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't tell you the truth. I didn't choose to preach the word or teach it. God chose me. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be led by his spirit. And I'm going to say what he tell me to say. And I'm going to say it with boldness. I'm not going to French. I'm like Jeremiah. Like he told me when God called me to the, to the word, to preach the word. He took me to the book of Jeremiah. And he showed me the word. He showed me the word. Be not dismayed at their faces. God gave me this holy boldness. i much rather... Obey God than man, because I could care less how you look at me, what you think of me, what you say about me, how you criticize me, how you say I'm harsh, I'm mean, I'm this. You can say what you want. All I'm concerned about is, God, what is you saying? Am I pleasing unto you? Am I, as long as I say what you say, because you the one that can destroy both soul and body in hell. I don't just preach the gospel because I love, because I don't want to go to hell. I don't obey God because I don't want to go to hell. I obey him because I love him. I obey my husband and submit to my husband because I love God and because I love my husband. I pray something I said. Bless you. I pray. Submit, woman. Submit. Blessings and peace in the Holy Ghost.